Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this IELTS general reading preparation video. Today, we're going to look at matching headings. And I'm very excited to go through this question type with you today because this is actually a very tricky and sometimes confusing question type. I get a lot of questions about this from my students, and usually test takers do not want to get this question type on the exam. Why? I'll tell you why in this lesson, so keep on watching. But basically, in this lesson, you can expect to see an overview of this question type. I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to best approach it, and then we'll go through an example together, looking at the strategy and some tips and tricks for this lovely, complicated question type of matching headings. So without further ado, let's learn a little bit about this question type and learn why test takers really don't like it. Okay, so the first thing to know about the matching headings question type is what are headings? So headings are short sentences that summarize information in a paragraph. You'll usually see headings um, on the top of various paragraphs in a magazine or in something you read in the newspaper or perhaps something you might read for work. We'll look at this uh, in a couple slides, but for now just know that headings summarize information in a paragraph. So in general, headings do not contain supporting details, but they contain general ideas. For this question type, you'll usually be presented with five to nine headings. So there could be more than nine headings, but this is very rare. So expect to see five to nine headings. It's very important to note that there will always be more headings than paragraphs. This is one of the reasons why students do not like this question type, because you could have headings that are left over and not used for your passage. So if your passage has five paragraphs, but your question type has nine headings, you're going to have four headings that are not used. So this leads to confusion because students usually second guess themselves and they're not sure whether or not they've made the correct choice for certain headings. And the goal of this question type is to match each paragraph to a heading. It's as simple as that. You're going to do this based on the general information in the text. So to do this, we're going to use the skimming technique. We want to know the general idea. We want to comprehend the information. So we're going to use the skimming technique, uh, especially in this question type, because we want to understand what is the main point of each paragraph. And of course, another interesting fact, and this relates back to the reason why test takers do not like this question type, all of the answers will come in a random order. So you can't really use a strategy for following a certain order. Headings will be listed out of order. And so we'll just have to do our best to make sure we're finding the information in an efficient way. Our strategy will look at this, so don't worry. We will tackle this together. All right, so this is our guide, and this is what we're going to follow today. There are five steps three of which are preparation work in our headings, and then the last two steps we will use with the passage itself. So first off, we're going to read each heading. Note that we are not even looking at the passage before we look at these first three steps. And this is really the golden rule. You'll see this in all of our videos. When it comes to the reading and really any sort of section on the exam, you want to do your preparation work well. And so in this case, that means reading each heading before you look at the passage. This is because you don't want to read blindly. You don't want to read the passage without knowing what these headings are about and really analyzing these headings. So do not skip this step. You're going to read each heading just to get an idea of what it's talking about. And then you're going to find your key words. Remember that your key words are the unique special words in all of these headings that really give it its meaning. We talk a lot about this in the general overview video, but for now, just make sure that you know keywords are words that give the heading its meaning. If you were to eliminate these words, your heading would not really have any depth or any meaning. Now, with a lot of practice, you can 
combine steps one and two to save on time. That's really a good idea because you always want to maximize your time. Now third, you're going to note similarities and differences between each heading. This is actually one of the difficult tricks of this question type. So there are very similar headings most times. Why? This is very difficult for test takers because test takers have to choose between the best or the better option since there may be a few reasonable headings for a specific paragraph. So you might think that three headings, for example, fit really well with one paragraph, but you have to really dissect and skim the information in the passage in order to really understand which heading is best. And that takes time. So it's really important to note the similarities and differences in your headings beforehand. So again, you can maximize your time. On the other hand, some headings may be complete opposites, and this can really help you when you're using process of elimination. So if you're able to note similar headings in the early stage, this will make your decision-making process easier later when you are answering your questions. So I would suggest here, which we'll look at later, if two headings are very similar, you can mark them with a symbol. So we could use a star, for example, next to two headings that are similar and maybe a plus sign for two headings that are opposites. And we'll look at this together in our step-by-step -step example. Just keep in mind that you may need to use this little symbol note-taking system just to make things clear for you. Now, this is our preparation work. And when we get to the passage, we're going to read the first and last sentences of the paragraph really important here because a lot of test takers fall into this trap of reading the entire passage word for word because they are just intimidated by this question type and that is not the best strategy you only want to read the first and last sentences remember with this question type we are looking for the general idea of each paragraph and usually reading the first and last sentences of each paragraph will give you a general idea because our opening sentence and our closing sentence of paragraphs usually give us the main theme of each paragraph. So usually for this question type, the sentences in the middle of the paragraph are not as important. However, in some very difficult examples, we may have to read the middle sentences of each paragraph just to get a better idea, but we'll look at this together. Usually the first and last sentences will suffice. And lastly, this is an optional step, but it is quite helpful, especially in the beginning stages. You can make margin notes. Now remember, your margin is going to be the side of your passage, so either the right side or the left side. And you can make notes here to help you. You can underline. No one is going to be grading or marking what you write in your test booklet, just your answer sheet. So go ahead and use this to help you to perhaps make notes such as number one is this question perhaps, or maybe the answer to number three is in this area. This will really help you. And you can actually try writing down the potential heading number next to each paragraph. This will sort of help you solidify your understanding of the paragraph, and it can actually really help you later on when you have to answer your questions you have a reference and that can be very helpful. Okay, before we look at our example, I just want to give you a rundown of the section that will be in for this general reading example. And today we'll be in section two. So remember in the general reading test, there are three distinct sections. And section two is famous for its workplace survival theme. So basically you're going to have career related topics in section two. And because of that, it is known to have mid-level difficulty. So it isn't an everyday topic like section one, but it isn't as abstract or academic as section three. So we're sort of in the mid range here. This question type is actually quite common in section two especially when it comes to employee handbooks or career-related topics or articles. Basically, just think of texts that could have 
headings. So don't be surprised if you find this question type in section two. All right, let's get started on the example. Okay, so here we are with our step-by-step -step example. You'll see on the left-hand side, we have step one, reading the headings, and then step two, finding keywords. So we're going to go through steps one and steps two first. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see our headings and our instructions. So we see reading passage one has seven sections, A through G. So we have seven sections, and if you look here at our headings, we definitely have more than seven. If you know your Roman numerals, we have 10 headings here. And remember, you will have these in Roman numerals. So we'll have to write the Roman numerals in our test booklet. Okay, so we have 10 headings and seven sections. So we know that three of these headings will not be used. There's a little bit of math in this reading example. Okay, so we have that out of the way. Just to go over the instructions again, we know we're going to choose the correct heading for sections A through G from this list of headings. And of course, we will have to write the correct number, the Roman numeral, in our boxes. And here, down here, we have our boxes. So first, we're going to read the headings just to get a general idea of each heading. And then afterwards, we're going to find the key words. Now, I would suggest that you combine these two steps in your practice and definitely in the exam. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's practice combining. So first, I'm going to read one. How can reflection problems be avoided? Now, in this case, an excellent keyword would be reflection problems and avoided. So if you were to take these three words out of this sentence, you would just have how can be. And that doesn't give you any sort of information whatsoever, and it doesn't give you any sort of meaning. So that's how we're able to find our key words. Let's look at number two. How long should I work without a break? Now in this case, long is important because it's talking about a length of time, so I would go ahead and underline that, and then work without break. Notice how I didn't underline should, or a, or even the question word in this case, because we're interested in the length of time one would work, or should work, without a break. Let's go to number three. What if I experience any problems? In this case, I would say experience and problems. Four, when is the best time to do filing chores? In this case, I'm going to say best time, filing, and chores. So far, we already know that this is about work because we are in section two, but we also see the words work, problems, filing, and a type of chore. So we know that this is perhaps some sort of office job. Let's look at five. What makes a good seat? So here, the most important part is good seat. And let's look at the next one, six. What are the common health problems to have? In this case, I would say common health problems. This is probably things, common health problems to have at the job, perhaps, or associated with this type of work. The next one, what is the best kind of lighting to have? In this case, I would say best and lighting. What are the roles of management and workers? Here I would say roles, management, and workers because we're looking at the difference between management and workers. Almost finished. Why does a VDU create eye fatigue? Now this is very specific, so I definitely want to underline VDU and eye fatigue. And lastly, where should I place the documents? In this case, I would say place and documents. Note how I never underlined things like should or what makes a good seat. This is because these are just extra parts of the sentence. I'm only looking for key words. All right, so let's just go ahead and show the keywords here. Let's see what it tells us. And it just makes all of our underlines a bit bolder because we went ahead and looked at all of this. So let's clear our screen just so we can look at this in a nice way. And we have our key words. Okay, now let's go to the next step because step three is actually pretty interesting for this question type. All right, now it's really important to note that each example for this specific question type of matching headings 
and any other question type in the IELTS exam for that matter will be different. So this is just a guide. This is a pretty common example, but keep in mind that everything is going to be different. This specific example today is very interesting because it contains question words. So if you remember from the previous slide and also looking here, this question type today uses question words such as how, how long, why, what, when, and where. So these are an excellent, excellent, excellent resource for the scanning and the skimming techniques. So we're going to rely heavily on skimming techniques today, but this will really come and help us in this process. So we're going to use this to our advantage while we look at the similarities and the differences by briefly, and I mean briefly, writing the type of answer we would be looking for. Now remember, this question type does not call for us knowing the answer. For example, we don't need to know exactly how reflection problems can be avoided. That is not part of this question type. We only need to know where this is located in the passage. But if we can briefly write the type of answer we would be looking for, this will help us when we look in the passage. And it could also eliminate any sort of extra reading because we are more well informed of the information in our headings. So just keep this in mind. If you ever come across any question type, it doesn't have to be just matching headings. If you see a lot of these question words and here they are blatantly obvious, go ahead and just try jotting down and writing down a couple of possible types of answers. And we'll go ahead and do that now. So if I'm looking at number one, how can reflection problems be avoided? Now, my question word here is how. How would be a question for a method or a way. So I'm going to write M for method. So how, which method, which type of way can reflection problems be avoided? Number two, how long? This, like we talked about in the last portion, always refers to time or a length of time. So I'm going to put T here for time. Three, what if I experience any problems? So this is something like a thing, something that will happen if a worker experiences problems. So I went ahead and put TH for thing. Number four, when is the best time to do filing chores? Again, similar to number two, we're talking about time. Then we see what makes a good seat. Again, I have what, so I'm going to say that it is something, I put TH. And then we have six, what are common health problems to have? Again, I'm going to say it's a thing. And in this case, it's going to be a type of problem, specific. So I put thing and problem. If we look at seven, what is the best kind of lighting to have? Again, I'm going to put thing. This might be a bit more specific where we're talking about a type. So I put thing or type, so T-Y. I hope you can follow along with me. Remember, your notes do not have to be beautiful. Only you are going to use them, so you can use your own method. And the next one, what, again, are the roles of management and workers? In this case, we're also looking at a thing. It's quite general. If we want to be more specific, we could say roles. So I'll go ahead and put an R here. And why? So finally, we don't have a what. We have something different. Why does a VDU create eye fatigue? Now, uh, this is going to be a reason. So reasons would explain why. So think of things like because, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, where should I place the documents? In this case, I would say it's a place. So I'm going to put P L for place. Now, I hope you have followed along and written your own note-taking system or answers here, but this will really help us. Now, we have made quite a few notes for things, TH. We have TH for number three. We have it quite scattered out here, and that's fine. Only two of these things are general, so only three and five are general. So in this case, I would say that three and five are actually pretty similar because they are general. So I'm going to go ahead and just put, let's put a star. Now this is for us to follow along when we are reading the passage. We know that three and five will have similar answers. 
And so these headings might confuse us later on. So it's really good to just make a note. And another thing that's interesting here is time. So we have two headings that are focused on time, and that is number two and number four. So we have how long, which is a length of time, and we have when. This can also confuse us down the road when we're looking at our passage. So I'm going to put a different symbol here. Let's put a hashtag, for example. So I'll use a hashtag for number two, and I'll also use a hashtag for number four. Beautiful. So we have these four headings that might be a bit tricky. Again, this will not always happen in this question type. We might not always have question words, and you may not have to do this specific step for a matching headings question type. You may have to do it for another question type, such as multiple choice or perhaps matching information. We don't know because anything could happen during the IELTS exam. You could have any types of words, any types of question words. So be prepared. And when you see question words like this all in a row in a beautiful list, go ahead and use this tip because it will help you. These question words are here for a reason, and usually they're here to confuse you. All right, let's go ahead and get into our passage. All right, so here we are with our step four and our step five. So we're going to start with step four here, and just be aware that the passage we're going to look at is on the right-hand side. I'll take you there in just a minute. First, let's focus on step four. So we're going to read the first and last sentences of each paragraph, okay? So we have read our headings, we know our keywords, we know our similarities and perhaps the opposites. Now it is time to read, but we need to optimize our time. Now we're quite lucky today because this passage that we see here has pretty short paragraphs. So if we look at A, for example, it is basically one sentence. So the same thing goes for C as well. So you see here that we will be able to optimize our time pretty easily, but the strategy is still the same, whether you have a long paragraph or a paragraph with one sentence. So this will allow us to get a general idea of each paragraph and remember some answers might also be listed within the paragraphs themselves so that means perhaps the second or the third sentence rather than the first and the last although most cases you'll be able to find the answers in the first and last sentences if this happens to you though so if you have a paragraph that is quite lengthy and it's difficult don't be afraid to just skip that question and move on to the next, because you want to make sure you're maximizing your time and answering the easiest questions first, and then spending time on the harder questions. Because remember, all of the questions are marked the same, so there isn't a different weight on one type of question where you get more points over another. That does not exist in the IELTS exam, so really devote your time to answering the easiest questions and the quickest questions, the quickest answers that you can find first, and then spend more time as necessary on the more difficult questions. Okay, so we have that. This is our strategy for today, and we're going to go ahead and answer the questions after we've done that. I would suggest going in order, so if I just scroll down here, I'll clear our screen, and if I scroll down here, you'll see our list of headings and our keywords that have been underlined and our notes, very helpful. And if I just scroll down here, we know we're in section two, uh, we can actually see all of our passage, which is very helpful. We have a nice slate to work with. Okay, so I'm going to be making notes on the right-hand side and then typing in our answers. So I hope you'll follow along with me. Okay, so let's start with A. Now, like I said before, this is a short paragraph. It is one sentence. So it's definitely acceptable to quickly scan the sentences for the keywords while skimming for the information. 
Keep in mind that usually you would use the skimming technique here, but since we have one sentence, it is completely fine to use both of those skills. So already here, I'm just going to work here. I see work, okay, it's talking about work practices, and I see discomfort or pain, I see muscular fatigue. So already I'm thinking of problems or health problems perhaps, eye strain, this is pretty specific, keyboard, and I see one of our keywords, this is probably the most important thing, and the thing that I noticed first, VDU. Now, VDU is a keyword here with, let's see, number nine. It says, why does a VDU create eye fatigue? And again, we had uh, muscular fatigue and eye strain. Now, eye strain is a synonym for eye fatigue, and VDU is listed here. So on the surface, a looks like perhaps it could be a match with heading nine, but the IELTS test will have various tricks. So let's just make sure that this is really what we think it is, and let's truly skim read here. So I see that work practices are an important factor in the prevention of muscular fatigue, discomfort, okay, eye strain, and that which can be associated with constant or regular work at a keyboard and VDU. Now, this doesn't necessarily give me reasons. This is very helpful here. See how we were looking for reasons? This does not provide any sort of reasoning, even though it does have the keywords. Instead, this sentence is really just telling me about health problems, things like muscular fatigue, everything that I underlined here. This is basically just telling me problems. And if I look here in my headings, I have the keyword problems and health in number six. What are the common health problems to have? And as a keyboard operator, the job that we're looking at for these headings and for this passage, these would be common health practices. So even though there's a little trick here, I would go ahead and say that section A should be I'm going to say six, but I'm not going to write six. Remember that you're going to write the Roman numeral. Very important. Okay, and then we could probably eliminate this as you are working from home or working on the test. So I'll go ahead and put a little slash on six. Okay, let's go to the next one. We have B. Now, this is definitely another short paragraph, but it isn't as short as A, so I'm not going to read each sentence. There are three sentences here. I'm going to focus on the first and the last, and let's see how that works for us. So I see immediately employer pays attention to the physical setting, such as workplace design, office environment, placement of monitors, as well as the organization of the work and individual work habits. And then the last one, I see operators should take note of and follow the preventive measures outlined below. Okay. Now I've just seen that this is talking about the employer and operators. And I remember from my heading keywords that we were looking at roles and management here in number eight. So what are the roles of management and workers? So the workers are also included here because operators would be workers. And we're looking at things, we're looking at roles, and the employer is responsible for the physical setting, workplace design, office environment. All of these things are things. And we are introduced to the roles of the various people in the office. So I would already say that eight is perhaps the best option because no other heading talks about different roles or the employer. But just to make sure, I'll briefly skim the middle sentence as well. Operators must be able to recognize work-related health problems and be given the opportunity to participate in the management of these. It shows that operators must recognize these health problems, so that is a role that they have, that is something they must do, and that just further verifies that I think section B should be V-I-I-I, -I -I. so that's V and three I's for eight. And there we go. Okay, again, we have a shorter paragraph in C. So let's go ahead and skim and scan C together. 
we see the typist, so that's already a good keyword, must be comfortably accommodated in a chair that is adjustable for height with a backrest that is also easily adjustable both for angle and height. The backrest and sitting ledge should preferably be cloth covered to avoid excessive perspiration. Okay, so here I am looking at the seat. I'm looking at a chair and this leads me directly to five, what makes a good seat? Because seat is a good synonym for chair, and all of these things, so a height, the backrest, easily adjustable, and cloth covered, these are all things that make a seat uh, a good seat. And so there isn't any other heading that would make me doubt this option of five. If I do look at three, because three was similar to five in that we were looking at things. I don't see anything about problems in C, so I can definitely eliminate three for C. And I'll go ahead and put what makes a good seat. So I'll put V for five in section C. Okay, we have another longer paragraph compared to the rest, and we have D. Let's go with our first and last sentences. We see when the keyboard operator is working from a paper file or manuscript, it should be at the same distance from the eyes as the screen. So this is talking about distance. The last sentence here, individual arrangement will vary according to whether the operator spends more time looking at the VDU or the paper. Now I'm looking here, majority of time, put directly in front of the operator. Now I see our keyword VDU and I'm thinking here again to look at nine because it says why does a VDU create eye fatigue? Now we're talking about the eyes, we're talking about VDU, so it might be good to think about this. However, we're also looking here at documents because you're looking at a manuscript if we look in the first sentence. So I'm also wondering if 10 would be a good answer because we're looking at specific places. So again, this is where our reasoning, our step three really comes in handy because we have to understand if paragraph D has more reasons or places. And from what I can see here, we're looking at a place because it's telling you where the manuscript should be. So it says the manuscript should be at the same distance from the eyes at the screen. It also says whichever the eyes are focused on for the majority of the time should be put directly in front of the operator. These are all signals for direction and different places where things are. Nothing here provides us with a reason. Even if I spend some time looking at the second sentence, it says the most convenient position can be found by using some sort of holder. Again, this just verifies that we're talking about a place. We're talking about direction. So D would be X and X for 10. So notice how we've already had two pretty tricky examples. We had A and D, which gave us two options to choose from, and we were already able to effectively eliminate those options, mostly because of step three, uh, looking at the type of answer and also based on our keywords. So definitely do not skip your preparation work. Okay, we're over halfway done. Let's go ahead and look at E. Again, I'm going to read the first and last sentences because this is another longer paragraph compared to the rest. While keying, it is advisable to have frequent but short pauses of around 30 to 60 seconds to proofread. Okay, so we're looking at time. And the last one, this period could be profitably used to do filing or collect and deliver documents. And this filing has uh, stuck out to me because I'm thinking of this one right here. I'm thinking of four, number four. When is the best time to do filing chores? So this is a time, but I'm also thinking of option two because option two is also a time. So I have to think, okay, these are both related to time. E is talking about time. Is it talking for how long I should work without a break? Or is it talking about when is the best time to do filing chores? This is probably going to be the most difficult question in our group because we have a keyword, but there are 
both about time. So two and four, are both about time. And we need to decide which one is best. So let's really spend some time here. If I were doing this in the exam, however, I would probably skip E, save it for last, just because it's a bit difficult. So let's do that now. Let's do it as though we're actually in the exam. Let's skip E and come back to it after we've done F and G. This just shows you that F and G are probably going to be easier because they're shorter paragraphs and we can spend time on E when we know we have the time. Okay, so let's go to F. Generally, the best position for a VDU is at right angles to the window, okay? And then it says, keep the face of the VDU vertical to avoid glare from overhead lighting. So we're talking again about this VDU and VDU is always here in option nine. But again, this isn't talking about why a VDU would create eye fatigue. Nothing about this paragraph talks about eye fatigue. Even if I look here in the second sentence, nothing is talking about eye fatigue. So I can eliminate nine for this answer just because it's a trick to keep VDU in the headline and also to have it in the paragraph. What we're really looking at here is the position for a VDU and the window. And in the last sentence, we're also talking about overhead lighting. And so basically, this sounds to me like a method of how to best place your VDU to not have any problems with the lighting or perhaps the reflection, which leads me directly to number one. How can reflection problems be avoided? Yes, the problem can be avoided by keeping your VDU at right angles to the window and it can avoid a glare from overhead lighting. And so this is definitely a method. I would go ahead and put I for F, for section F. And honestly, if you even look at the rest of the headings that have been left for you, nothing else really seems to make sense here. So I would be confident in I for section F. And almost finished, let's go to G. Again, this is a shorter paragraph, so let's just go ahead and skim and scan at the same time. Unsatisfactory work practices or working conditions may result in aches or pain. Symptoms should be reported to your supervisor early on so the cause of the trouble can be corrected and the operator should seek medical attention. Now this is sort of similar to A because it's talking about aches and pains, but this is different because it tells the operator that symptoms should be reported to your supervisor and the operator should seek medical attention. So these are things that the operator must do if problems occur or if problems are experienced. So I look here at three and this looks to be the best answer because it tells you exactly what to do if you experience problems. Talk to your supervisor and get medical attention. So I'm going to go ahead and put three for section G. Notice how problems is a general way to say these aches, pains, perhaps unsatisfactory work practices. So you're not always going to find the direct keyword in your paragraphs, which is why the skimming technique is so important for matching headings. And yes, it does take a bit longer. I am reading quite quickly, but I'm actually reading at a slower pace than I would read during the exam. I'm reading out loud. I want to make sure you can understand me. So just keep in mind that you can skim read quite quickly, and it actually won't take up as much time as you may think. So it's a great way to practice speed reading and making sure that you're maximizing your time. Okay, we're not done yet though. And I just want to look here and see exactly where we are. Now I'm going to eliminate the answers I've put here. And this is what I would encourage you to do in the exam if you have a tricky question. So let's eliminate uh, VI, which would be six. That's been eliminated. Let's eliminate eight, which is V, I, I, I. Let's eliminate five, which is V. Let's eliminate 10, which is X. The first one will be eliminated here, and then we have three, or I, I, I. Now these are eliminated. So we have 
one, two, three, and four options for E. Now remember, for E, we were in between two answers. We were in between two, and that is how long should I work without a break? And we were in between four, which is when is the best time to do filing chores? This is quite difficult because they are both related to time, so we can't really eliminate them based on the type of answer we're looking for. We really just have to understand what is written. So I'm going to take about 10 seconds and just read this again to understand. It's advisable to have frequent but short pauses. Okay, it tells me the time, the length of time for pauses. When doing this, relax your hands. Okay, so this is something telling me what to do during a break. After you have been keying for 60 minutes, you should have a 10 minute change of activity. During this spell, it is important that you do not remain seated but stand up or walk around. This period could be profitably used to do filing or collect and deliver documents. Okay, now just reading the two sentences here in the middle has sort of given me a better understanding. And I would say that it is two. So how long should I work without a break? Because it's giving you specific times, so after you have been keying for 60 minutes, you should have a 10 minute change of activity. This is very important because it's giving me specific amounts of time, which also fit with the type of answer we were looking for. I wouldn't say that it's four because it doesn't necessarily say that this period is the best time to do filing chores. It says it could be profitably used. And this is a common trick on the IELTS exam. They're actually saying two different things. They're saying here that this period could be used for filing, but it doesn't say that it's the best time for filing. Perhaps the best time for filing is when you arrive in the morning or before you leave in the evening. It doesn't necessarily say this, and so we cannot say with confidence that E is four or IV. And so I would confidently say two, just because we have the right amount of time, we have the correct information here, it still relates to time, I would go ahead and put two for E. And there we have it. So we have our answers. We used skimming, we used a little bit of process of elimination here, and when we couldn't, we just spent a little more time skimming and truly understanding what was written. Okay, so let's clear our screen, and let's go ahead and check. So let's see how we did. I'm quite confident, but let's see. And there we have it. They were all correct. And here on the right-hand side, we can see the reasoning behind the answers, which is basically what I explained to you. Great job. Great job today. That was not an easy example, but you stuck with it, you followed through, and I'm confident that we used our strategy to our advantage. So now we're just going to wrap up quickly with a couple of do's and don'ts for this question type. And of course, do, you want to read the headings first, exactly like we did today. And then when you look at the passage, pay attention to clues. This is very important. There are a couple of keywords that will perhaps trick you, so they won't be clues, but they'll be there to trick you. And then you might have some keywords that can actually help you find the correct heading. You want to skim as necessary. So this is the main strategy for the matching headings type, but don't skim more than you need to. Remember, we only looked at the middle sentences in each paragraph when it was absolutely necessary. In general, you can pretty much stick with the first and last sentences. And of course, you want to write your Roman numerals. Do not write any words or any numbers on your answer sheet, just the Roman numerals you see in the heading section. Okay, and now for some don'ts. You do not want to read the entire passage. We were lucky today in that our passage was shorter and our paragraphs were quite short, but if you have a longer passage, do not feel like you have to read the entire thing word for word. We skim read a lot of it, but this was just to get an idea and just to verify our answers. You do not want to use the heading more than once. 
They will just be used once in the exam and do not be misled by the headings. So we had one today that was pretty common with VDU and we saw it in our heading, we saw it in our passage, but it wasn't even used. So do not be misled by something even if a keyword pops out at you and is used quite frequently. And like I said before, don't write words. You want to write your Roman numerals, so get used to those. All right, thanks again for following along with me today. I hope you have gained some confidence in this question type, and I encourage you to keep practicing. The best way to do that is to visit us at www dot bestmytest.com slash IELTS. If you go here, you'll have a ton of reading practice and opportunities to really understand the various tips and tricks and question types and really anything you need to know for the IELTS exam. So go ahead and visit us and I look forward to having another lesson with you. Have a great day.